Flowcharting Part Zero. Actually, this is a uh, flowcharting for computer programs. Uh, it's for a uh, computer programming class. And what we're trying to talk about is um, how do you create a flowchart and what's kind of the purpose of the flowchart. And I want you to start with a, a blank screen here. And what I, I want you to think about is let's say you were going to um, draw the flow, floor plan for a house. You know, just the basic floor plan for a house. And let's say you were thinking about a the blueprint. And and you might think about, well, why would I want to be looking at a blueprint um, of a house? And w what good does that uh, do me? Well, if you're building a house, you may be thinking about, in this house, uh, before you start building it, you want to show someone so that you can kind of get an agreement of what what is the house going to have that uh, you're going to need. Now, one thing is to look at the outside of the house and, and see uh, the way the house looks from um, for someone looking from the outside, but you also want to think about the functionality of the house and what you can do with the house. And the blueprint helps you cover all of those kind of things. So if you're kind of thinking about that, now let me let me just mention. Let's say you also were thinking about uh, in that house, you might want to uh, tell someone, well, we're going to have a kitchen, and we're going to have a, a living room area, and we may have a couple of bedrooms, maybe a bathroom and another bedroom and maybe another bedroom and maybe a hallway kind of down in through here that would be the hallway maybe whatever but somehow you're gonna break um, you're gonna you're gonna build a house and before you actually want to build it you want to tell someone well this is kind of what it's gonna look like now this I'll very good drawing but um, I, I just want you to thinking about um, why would someone have um, a drawing of this. Well, you you before you build this house, you want to talk about it. You want to say, well, what's it, this going to uh, look like, and how would you benefit from it? Well, if if you don't have a kitchen, then you don't have a place to cook and so forth. Uh, the other thing is, if your whole house was one big kitchen, well, it, if you wanted to sit in an area and maybe watch your TV in an area with uh, a chair over here and maybe a chair over here watching the TV um, you would um, be mixed up with what's going on with, with the kitchen over here if you were trying to cook on the stove so you wanna you wanna kinda get a picture in somebody's mind of what is it that we're trying to do well Again, we're talking about uh, programming, and with programming, we use flowcharting to help us design and tell what we're going to do with the program. Well, let's let's move forward with that. Uh, with programming, what we've got is some we've got some symbols to help us identify what we're going to try to do with a computer program. And uh, with some of these symbols, you want to think about them a little bit more. What what's the symbol for, and how do we use it? Well, with flowcharting part part zero, what I want to do is I want to talk about just the symbols just to, just enough to get you started so that when I do the next little clip you can um, use those symbols and actually maybe see how they can work in, in identifying um, the, the demonstration of how, how to work with the program so with the symbols let's let's talk about a couple of them first one's the oval and uh, the oval symbol is the symbol to tell you where a program starts. So if you're looking at uh, an oval in a, in a program, you're going to say, all right, well, the program starts here. And you could also use the oval to tell where the program ends. So somewhere in the program, you may have another oval, something like that, that says end. And usually there's going to be some other symbols 
that kind of directionally tell you which way the program gro goes in a flowchart. And, and you want to get used to that as well. So with these things in mind, let's, let's talk about a couple more symbols. Um, there's a rectangle. And the rectangle is to identify processes that go on in a computer program. And when you're working in, compu in the computing area, you can have lots of processes going on. So you need to know, well, what's a symbol that you can talk about uh, process? And what's a process? Well, a process might be a calculation, might be an action that needs to occur. Uh, but process is more about um, actually getting something to, to happen. It might be a formula. So if you wanted to say um, C is a variable and you want to say C is equal to A plus B, then uh, you might put that in a process symbol. And that would help identify, well, some action is going to go on in that uh, in that particular part of the program and and you're going to help identify that by giving using the rectangle to say all right well this is the process we've got a diamond symbol and the diamond symbol is to help you identify that the the program has to go in another direction it may go this way or it may go that way and you may have something happen over here or have something over here, or you, you may want to go around something, and um, the diamond helps you deal with that, and it usually relates to something uh, to do with what we would call an if statement. And the if statement says, well, if this is true, go over here and do this. And if it's not true, that must means, mean it's false. So you're going to go over here and do something else. And the elf helps us divide that up. So the diamond is uh, what we use for the decision. Uh, we also call it a selection. But it's to help us uh, determine if we want to go around something or only do something in certain occasions. So the, the diamond is one of our symbols that we're going to be using. Let's talk about the um, parallelogram. Uh, it's kind of like a rectangle sideways, and um, the parallelogram is used for input, or it could be used for output. And the purpose of the parallelogram or the input-output symbol is to say, well, we've got some data that's going to come in. could come from the keyboard. could come from uh, a data entry file but you use the input symbol to identify that we're going to have some, that this particular part of the program, we're going to have some input coming in. Or we could have some output. It could even be output going to a printer. It could be going to your monitor, your display. We've got keyboards that can input. Got quite a few things that we can do with an input symbol. That's one of my favorites. This is called... Um, the symbol to identify that we're going to have a module. In other words, we're going to take a complex task, something more complex than just a couple of symbols, and we're going to break it down and we're going to say, go over to this particular part of the program and do a, a complete task. And modules are used to break down a complicated program, and, and it doesn't take long in computer programming to have a complicated task going on. The symbol can also be drawn. It's, it's like the um, process symbol, kind of, because it's a rectangle. And sometimes we draw this symbol rather than the line. It's almost like a, a rectangle inside of a rectangle. Or we may draw the lines over here on the sides, both sides. And this would be called a process symbol. Oh, I'm sorry, a module. <laughs> it's like a process, but anyway, it's a task. That's the symbol for a module. Those are our, our, our main symbols that uh, we would be looking at if we're going to do a program. And I want to mention one other thing, the flow lines. Now, the flow lines help identify where is the, um, 
where's the program going? In other words, the direction. And if you're looking at, you know, I talked about the blueprint a minute ago. The blueprint is uh, what you might use to identify what a house is going to look like before you build a house. So someone who's getting the house built or whoever the builder is knows and has some direction of what you're going to do. And when you do a flow chart for a program, the uh, just to have a bunch of symbols sitting around may not be quite as clear. But if you knew that the first thing that you wanted to do was to start at the top with the terminal symbol and, the, and you came in and you saw a rectangle, you said, oh, I, I need to do some type of process. And then you saw a parallelogram. You said, well, that's going to input something. And then you saw uh, maybe a, a, a diamond and you said, well, that's going to... Um, be where you got a decision, decide whether to do one thing or another. But if you didn't draw those and connect those items with flow lines, then it would be hard to know what's the first thing to do, what's the second thing, and so forth. So with the flow lines, what, what we want to do is we want to point to the direction. Now, usually, this one right here is um, pointing down. And I want you to recognize that when you are dealing with uh, a flow chart for a program, Usually we try to make everything go from the top part of the page. Let's say this was the top part up here, and we want it to flow down. Occasionally we've got to go to maybe to the right or maybe to the left, but usually things flow from top down. And you, you want to keep that in mind when you're doing a flow chart. Usually you don't have an, uh, a flow line that kind of goes over here diagonally, but you may, and kind of this way. Usually they flow from top down. And that kind of keeps the, the way a flow chart is going to look consistent so that when one person draws the flow chart and another person looks at the flow chart, then you can get the, the correct idea of how to write the program that you're going to work on. In other words, if one person wrote the flowchart and it went from top down, and another one wrote the, uh, drew the flowchart and went from the bottom up, then it would be hard to uh, keep up with, well, who wrote it and why did they do it this way versus do it another way? If you can get programmers uh, in the development side of things to do things similar, then, then the future uh, result of cr creating a program is going to be more consistent and going to be easier to go back and fix. Oh, a whole lot of benefits. So anyway, with um, flow charting, you need some symbols. And these are some of the basic symbols that we're going to use. And I'm, I, in uh, flow charting part one, I actually use those symbols in, a, in an illustration of how do you put the symbols to work in something that you could probably figure out pretty easy. All right, now, a couple other things I wanted to mention. What do you use uh, to do this? And um, what, kind of, what kind of tools may, may you use? And we've got some tools that help you draw that. And you don't have to do this, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm doing right now with freehanding it. You can use tools like Visio, Microsoft's tool. PowerPoint, actually, Microsoft, uh, in PowerPoint, you can draw flowcharts. One of the, my favorites uh, would be... Um, a tool that uh, you can get off the web, if you just Google Raptor, you can find a tool called Raptor. Raptor not only lets you draw the flowchart, but it also puts it in almost a running program. Or it, it probably could consider it a running program. really like Raptor. If you did your, your flowchart in Raptor and saw it work, you know right off the bat, you know, you've got it, you understand it. Uh, there are other tools out there. You may want to experiment with those, but uh, these are three that I like, and um, I'll probably use these in my class and uh, demonstrate some of the program development that I'll be showing you with that. Well, that's kind of it for flowcharting part zero, and I would encourage you to go on to flowcharting part one and see a del an illustration.